15 year old female presented with fever and severe headache mri was performed for evaluation of her headache she also had past history of valvular heart disease ring enhancing lesions are common challenge in neuroimaging we would like to give you some tips which can help you in routine practice diagnosing ring enhancing lesions correctly in precision requires practice and also knowledge of conventional and advanced neuroimaging applications looking at vasogenic edema diffusion restriction presence of hemorrhage looking at certain signs called incomplete ring sign target sign will all help us in narrowing the differentials and help us arriving at the diagnosis advanced neuroimaging applications like perfusion and spectroscopy can give invaluable information enhancement characteristics presence or absence of mural nodule and the location of the lesion are also very important most common ring enhancing lesions are remembered with a mnemonic called magical doctor where m represents metastasis a represents abscess g for granuloma or glioblastoma i for infarct c for contusion a for aids related ring enhancing lesions like toxoplasmosis l for lymphoma d for demyelination or for resolving hematoma or radiation necrosis center of the ring enhancing lesion consists of necrotic tissue as in neoplasm radiation necrosis or old infarction it can be hemorrhage in some cases it can be cyst fluid in craniopharyngioma pilocytic astrocytoma or hemangioblastoma it is pus in cases of abscess and it can be normal tissue in cases of demyelination coming to enhancement characteristics they can be thick and nodular in case of neoplasms thin and regular in case of abscess thin regular with crenated margins in cases of fungal abscess they can be incomplete rim towards cor- cortex or gray matter in demyelination ring enhancement with mural nodule can also be seen in low grade neoplasms like pilocytic astrocytoma thin smooth rim enhancement in case of abscess incomplete rim enhancement in case of demyelination towards the cortex mural nodule in a case of low grade astrocytoma thick nodular en- enhancement in glioblastoma multiforme again one more case of astrocytoma with thick nodular enhancement looking at diffusion can help us narrowing differential of ring enhancing lesions whenever you see central diffusion restriction it can be a case of abscess peripheral diffusion restriction can be seen in case of glioblastoma and high grade neoplasms diffusion restriction within the excrescences of inner wall can be seen in fungal etiology diffusion restriction within the center of the innermost target rim is seen in toxoplasmosis diffusion restriction towards the progressive end is seen in demyelination homogeneous diffusion restriction is seen in cases of lymphoma this is a case of glioblastoma multiforme with peripheral diffusion restriction peripheral rim of restriction in a case of demyelination central diffusion restriction in a case of pyogenic abscess next most important thing is looking at the perilesional edema extensive edema is seen in case of metastasis or abscess no edema or less edema is seen in case of neurocysticercosis no edema and minimal vasogenic edema in case of ncc extensive vasogenic edema in metastasis from carcinoma lung next most important clue is conglomeration conglomeration is seen in case of tuberculosis racemos ncc blastomycosis and nocardiosis the most common being tuberculosis here is the tuberculomas in the perisylvian cortex and in the basal cisterns showing conglomeration looking like cluster of grapes taking size into consideration sometimes is very helpful smaller size lesions are mostly neurocysticercosis gliomas are bigger lesions generally however metastasis can have variable sizes they can be very small to very large determining whether ring enhancing lesion is solitary or multiple is very helpful sometimes because solitary lesions are most probably pyogenic abscesses multiple 
ring enhancing lesions are neurocystic sarcosis tuberculomas or metastasis taking t2 signal into consideration is sometimes very useful pyogenic abscesses or tubercular abscesses have central t2 hypo intensity secondary to macrophages and free radicals left cerebellar tubercloma with vasogenic edema and causing effacement of fourth ventricle and hydrocephalus mark t2 hypo intensity is very helpful in this case if csf signal is similar to the flare signal then most probably you are dealing with a case of colloid vascular stage of neurocystic sarcosis it's an important clue another important clue is identifying the scolex scolex is eccentrically located and best appreciated in heavily t2 weighted images hemorrhage in ring enhancing lesions is seen most probably in toxoplasmosis where the wall of the toxoplasmosis can show hemorrhage uh, again in glioblastoma because of neovascularity you can see the hemorrhage this is a case of toxoplasmosis in a immunocompromised patient you can see central res diffusion restriction and also hemorrhage in the susceptibility weighted images e image showing the hemorrhage within the walls in toxoplasmosis post contrast t1 weighted images show enhancing eccentric center corresponding to vessels passing through the center immediate hypo intense areas corresponding to compact necrosis and enhancing periphery secondary to endarteritis and inflammation which is called eccentric target sign you can also see concentric target sign which is described in non contrast t2 weighted images which has three zones of alternative hypo intense and hyper intense areas this is also seen in case of cerebral toxoplasmosis target sign can also be seen in case of tuberculosis which is nothing but central calcific focus and peripheral enhancement mr spectroscopy in a case of metastasis showing elevated lipid lactate and choline levels with decreased naa case of parietal tuberculoma showing elevated lipid lactate which is more than choline there is also decreased naa in this case into last but not the least perfusion weighted imaging can help us differentiating infectious lesions from neoplastic lesions in general infectious lesions will have low regional blood flow and volume as compared to neoplastic lesions in this posterior fossa tumor you can appreciate high regional cerebral blood flow and volume as compared to the control on left cerebellum with this background knowledge let us come to our case t1 showing hyperintense peripheral capsule flare images showing central mixed density areas vasogenic edema cerebral edema t2 showing layering within the center and midline shift you can also appreciate diffusion restriction which is intense in the center which is hallmark of pyogenic abscess uniform homogeneous diffusion restriction there is thin smooth rim of enhancement which is classical for pyogenic abscesses so this is a case of pyogenic abscess in a case of cerebral abscess early and late cerebritis there are no specific imaging features early abscess shows incomplete rim which is appreciated on second week mature abscess which occurs in third week shows complete rim of enhancement enhancing ring lesions caused by pyogenic abscesses are commonly located at gray white matter junction on non contrast mri pyogenic abscesses show iso intense to slightly hyper intense capsule on t1 weighted images and hypo intense on t2 weighted images the ring enhancement on post contrast images is usually thin and smooth often thinner along the medial margin however greater thickness irregularity and nodularity of the wall of lesions are suggestive of fungal infection summarize and address the most important question whether it's benign or malignant rim enhancement whenever you see nodular enhancement it is most probably neoplastic surrounding edema is variable in cases of neoplasm but extensive in cases of abscess thicker rim greater than 5 mm is 
mostly in favor of neoplasm. Intermediate T1 signal is seen in neoplasms. However, iso-intense to hyper-intense rim is seen in case of abscesses. Hypo-intense rim is seen in case of abscesses, again secondary to free radicals. Daughter lesions are relatively commoner in case of pyogenic abscesses. Increased RCBV is seen in case of neoplasms as compared to lower RCBV in case of pyogenic abscesses. Diffusion restriction is seen in case of pyogenic abscesses. Elevated lactate and choline peaks are seen in case of neoplasm as compared to elevated amino acids, lactate, succinate and acetate in case of pyogenic abscesses. Nobody can completely do justice to ring enhancing lesions. So with this case based discussion, we tried to simplify ring enhancing lesions and we tried to give some tips which can help you in routine practice, which can help us narrowing the differential diagnosis. Hope this video was useful for you. Thank you very much.